on today's crossover edition of Locked on Yankees and Locked on Padres. We're talking about the Tatis to the Yankees rumor that was getting a bit out of control earlier today. Plus, we'll discuss our feelings about what the teams have done so far this winter and what other teams have done so far this winter. So get ready because an all new Locked on Yankees and Locked on Padres begins now. You are Locked on Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, Yankees fans. Happy Tuesday, Padres fans. Welcome to a crossover edition of Locked on Yankees and Locked on Padres. Both shows are part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Stacey Gatsoulias, the host of Locked on Yankees, and I'm joined by Javi Reyes, host of Locked on Padres. Javi, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm just, you know, every now and then, you just you see something trending. And, and there's been a lot of things trending on the old Bird app lately, especially some truly heinous stuff coming from the person who owns the uh the website yesterday that i i for one just it's just wild right just wild stuff all around i can't talk enough about it and then as if because stace here's what i and we were talking about this before we recorded usually you get the type of nonsense we're about to talk about like when nothing has happened for a while right this off season has seen we're going to talk about all this with xander going to my team Aaron Judge going back to the Yankees for you've got the Mets Kode Senga you've got all sorts of deals Trey Turner to the Phillies and then people decide you know some ESPN radio hosts they log on they do their little things and they're like I got an idea let's pretend that the Yankees that their big move which in fairness we did hear that they're trying to make a big move that they're right. actually going to trade for Fernando Tatis Jr which is I mean just good job like I'm not even going to say good job because at least when you have people who do the little hot take thing, say you're Emmanuel Acho, who's for months, I know you're not necessarily the biggest football fan has been trying to say that to a, the tag of Aloya, quarterback of the Dolphins is better than Justin Herbert, right? It's been this whole thing. At least that one. I'm like, I know what you're doing though. And it's smart. I, I see what you're doing. You saw that there was an opportunity with this. It's like, you guys weren't even trying, you know what I right. mean? They, they, there wasn't even any connection, no fluid no tissue that made any sense here and yet yeah. here we are talking about it so maybe i'm an idiot and it did work so <laughs> i just found it amusing because i mean people were really running away with it and as you said it's yeah. not like nothing's happened this isn't like the off seasons of the past few years where it's been quiet and like mm -hmm. especially that off season where both harper and machado didn't sign until yeah. spring training oh. started and oh. spring training oh, yeah. i mean it was like ridiculous so it is really odd that something like that happened, but it's also odd how quickly people took to it and made it seem like it was something mm. substantial and something that was actually real when, sure, I mean, it's kind of a crazy scenario and we can come up with different ways to try and do this trade, but <laughs> I don't know. I just thought it was really silly. It is really silly. And, we're, you know, I, I want to do, I want to talk about in fairness, I did this last year when after the Tatis suspension, I put out a potential trade idea. Um, and that was also in the context of in the middle of the season, and maybe they want to truly go all for it. I, I just think that one of the problems with this trade is that there's a variety of reasons for why it doesn't work, which I think we should get into right now. I, yes. I think we should just talk really quickly as to why this trade doesn't make sense. Number one, um, perhaps the most important reason. When you think of this trade, what do you think of is this? Bottom line is, Fernando Tatis Jr., he's got the Brady hair, he's got the facial hair, and he's a loud personality. That right. is not allowed. Right. Just X on the New York Yankees. You got facial hair? Nope. Get the heck out of here, right? Whether or not that's a cultural problem, it is, is up to everyone else to decide. Right. But whatever, right? So that's number one. And number two is we're in the middle of free agency in which – Carlos Correa is currently still a free agent for uh, for hire. Right. Now, you could make the argument, right, Stace, that maybe the Yankees hate the Astros so much that they're going to let the best available player on the market slip because of some weird, unearned sense of self-righteousness that is totally ridiculous. But 
Okay, you want to make that argument, fine. But then the next thing is, Fernando Tatis Jr. is under a 14-year deal. If right. he wasn't, then maybe we could actually talk some business a little bit. Because in fairness, in a vacuum, Tatis has had an incredible he had an incredible rookie year that he was hurt a lot of the season for but he was he was very very good then he had 2020 where he was a, a basically like an mvp candidate for most of the year he really blows up on the scene he lands on mvp of the show but that was also 2020 and then 2021 great season but then he also has this shoulder issue and then he's in and out and whatnot but he was still incredible finished top three in mvp voting and then you had all the nonsense sets with the getting popped for peds and whatnot uh, this off season, you have the motorcycle stuff. So I I think that that's a big part of this, though, is that if he was not under a contract, maybe I could see a world in which this makes sense. The right. Pirates just traded everything. My, they traded my, at my this hat of mine. I mean, I have it back now, but they traded my hat. They traded everything for Juan Soto. So you could say, oh, well, maybe they're trying to refill and they just brought in Xander Bogarts, right? That's where this rumor, I feel like, is really the – the elementary understanding of this rumor where a lot of people said, Oh well, yeah, they signed Bogarts. He's a shortstop. And mm. they have, so therefore where, where could he possibly go? And it's like, right. ah, move him to center field. He's too talented. Sure. Um, so I think that's where it came from. I think those are kind of the primary reasons for no. What are the primary reasons for no? Do you think on the Yankee side of things? I think it's the length of the contract. They have enough of mm. those right now. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, they just signed Judge for nine years. They still have the rest yeah. of Stanton's deal. They have Cole's deal. You right. know, they finally right. got Aroldis Chapman off the books. Thank God. Um, they still have yeah, Hicks that they're trying to move. Um, <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah, I know. Good luck with that. I said, if Brian Cashman can get Hicks for a living, breathing human, I will not say a bad thing about Brian Cashman for a full 365 days. Wow. Wow. That's, That's a, a lot. lot. That's a lot. Aaron Hicks, you know, I was at a game. When he, it was a game against, I'm going to say the Rays. It was late August with a friend of mine. A friend of ours, actually, Steve Granada. Used oh. to have his on Angels. And the boos that could be heard, it was an error in the outfield. I know it was an error. He misplayed a ball or whatever. And then I remember saying to the people that were next to us who wanted to talk to Steve because they were like fascinated by the fact that he covers the minors for the Yankees. Yeah. And then um, they were, t- and I was like, oh, I feel it. The, the double play is coming from Aaron Hicks. And then he oh, yeah. also, the stadium was, boo- I, I like feel bad for the guy. Um, if we're yeah. Being honest. Yeah, no, I do too. Cause I really was hoping that he'd come back from the injury and be okay. And then it just didn't happen. And mm-hmm. that one game where he made the two misplays, the one where he just stared at the ball as it bounced from fair territory into foul territory and allowed guys to score. And then the ball went over his head and it was just like, what are you doing? It was like mm-hmm. his Chuck Knobloch moment. And I just, I do feel bad for him. And I, I'm one of those people I don't boo. I boo the opposing yeah, people, but I don't boo. Yeah. And I don't really do that either. Um, but I wouldn't boo my own players. And I, I did really feel bad for him. And I mean, it got to the point where Aaron Boone was like, yeah, we got to take you out. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> like, it got to that point. Um, yeah. And on the other spectrum of things, with Tatis, it's gotten really bad. Because the dude is just doing all sorts of dumb stuff. So I just don't think the Yankees want to touch that right now. No. Um, now, if he wasn't under contract and a team let that stuff interfere, I think they're moronic and shouldn't run a baseball team. The right. bottom line is he's way too talented and way too young. If he wasn't already signed. Right. I think that he probably is the most valuable asset in all of baseball if he was on the trade block and that didn't have a contract with it, what it is. And in fairness, his contract, I mean, you know salaries will go up and whatnot it's not totally incomprehensible but like you said with the judge contract with cole with stanton that i think ends in like 2029 or something like that which is something wild. crazy yeah like <laughs> holy god that is that is not oh man we're already seeing that not age well um <laughs> so for all those reasons i just can't see it that being said just in a vacuum, I would like to ask you, like, what kind of pieces would it be possible? That the, I think that obviously if this trade were to happen, I think Anthony Volpe obviously has to come back. One of the top prospects in baseball he's a shortstop. Uh, there we go. The next one would probably be Jason Dominguez because everyone and their mother seems to talk about the guy for yeah. ill or not. Uh, people who are overrating him. I've heard some people from a questionable sports podcast be like, oh, I want to trade him for Acuna. And I'm like, all right, you, you Yankees fans are out of control right now. But – he would probably be part of the package. And yeah. then another name that's been thrown out there is Nestor Cortez, which, oh my God, I mean, I, I love him. I adore him. That is kind of what we'd be looking at here. 
I just right. don't think that it makes sense for either side, really. I think that what would have to happen is somehow Tatis would have to do something crazy again that would actually allow them to void his contract. Like, he, he decides <laughs> to sign up for extreme evil Knievel, like like Ghost Rider Johnny Blaze, and then he does that, and they have to void his contract. Right. And then the Padres would also have to be not in a winning position. They right. would have to see that um, uh, Soto regressed, and Xander Bogarts was a bust, and Darvish was bad, and Manny is clearly going to opt out. That's the only way this makes sense. And as a result, that would only happen midway through the season. You know what I mean? All right. those variables that are already very unlikely, in my opinion, they would have to happen in the middle of the season for the, the Yankees to be like, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll take that guy. We'll help you retool your farm and give you, you know, a, a player like a Nestor Cortez who can help by irritation. But again, yeah, that's all wanna... just a thought experiment. It's just wild, like, where people got this from. Just go sign Carlos Correa. Like, it, he's right there. You don't have to... Right. You don't have to trade all these assets. You have. And I really, I really don't think, I think if he came over and said, my bad dudes, like, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, you know, cause I know people were with the Cole Donaldson thing. They were like, you know, Donaldson called Cole out for the sticky stuff. And how are you mm -hmm. trading for him? Yeah. And they were like buddies. Like you could see yeah. them on the bench together. So, you know, it, it if Carlos Correa came over to the Yankees and basically talked to the guys who were still there from mm -hmm. 2017, which there aren't that many left, and said, "My bad, let's just move on," it you know, it, it would be yeah. fine. I, I think I don't think that that's what's keeping them from getting him. But I feel like they didn't do it last season because they were hanging on to Volpe and Peraza like they yeah. were, like like they were hanging off a cliff <laughs> and needed to hold on to them for dear yeah. life. And it was like, what are you doing? And then That's they bring problem. Peraza up and mm -hmm. barely play him, even though he was clearly better yeah. than the starting shortstop. Or, or at the minimum, clearly not worse. Right. So right. I think that that's one of the issues with um, the Yankees. I know some people we're going to talk about it a little bit more, but yeah, like I just, it's very funny because from what I've heard, from people that I know who are a little bit close to the Yankees as well. And I imagine everyone that you've heard from too is the Volpe is just like as untradeable as can be. Like, yeah. I, I really don't see, we're talking like an Otani type of player in order to get this guy. Like that would have to be what's involved right? with Tatis's contract, with all the off field stuff, with the facial hair and his style of play. I just, it would be rad for the yeah. Yankees to actually have someone who was fun. Hey, I got one for you Stace. Ready? You know, the last time they won the World Series was when they had really fun, not traditionally Yankee personalities on their team. Just throwing oh, it out there. I know. Just throwing it out there. I think that's a very interesting little coincidence that they had people pieing each other and another dude who had an app on and was super vocal on Twitter and everything. Like, I think it's very interesting that the last time they won a World Series was that they had those guys. But I... What do I know? What do I know? Yeah. So uh, I mean, in a moment, yeah. we're going to talk more about stuff that happened during the winter meetings, what you guys got, what we got so far, because teams aren't done yet. And that's another thing we'll talk about. Fans are a little too crazy on this whole, oh, God, you know, the Yankees need to do more. We know the Yankees need to do more. Everyone needs to calm down. We'll talk about this in a moment. But first, BetOnline.net is your number one source mm. for your sports betting info. Yeah. I apologize to the New York Knicks. I'm going to say it right now, okay, because I I just made fun of them, what was it, two weeks ago, and they've won four in a row now. So, I, And their defense is in the top 10 of the NBA right now, which what? That, we haven't seen anything like that in years. So Knicks mm -hmm. fans, go to bet online and bet on the Knicks. Knicks. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer to esports. We've got it all at betonline.net. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Javi, did you know that this was in existence? I brought this up a few weeks ago, but I need to talk about it. There was a tournament mm. in which people competed in Microsoft Excel. I did not see this. <laughs> yes. I did not see this, no. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, apparently, this is a thing you can bet on, and I didn't know that. So head to the <laughs> website today or... Use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. 
Thank you for making Locked On Padres and Locked On Yankees your number one listen of the day. For your second listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Yay. (laughs) Okay. Aaron Judge. I cried. (laughs) Oh, wow. Okay. (laughs) Because, and I mentioned this on the live show that I did when the announcement came that he signed. That Arson Judge tweet was the scariest thing ever. And I talked about it on the show after the live show, how the Yankees front office was also terrified when they saw that tweet because they thought, Mm. is something happening? Oh, my God. So the roller coaster of emotions that I went through that night and then wake up the next day and i didn't even see it on twitter i saw it in my slack group one of my friends posted it and said oh my god and i was like oh, is this real and i went to, yeah. <laughs> went to twitter made sure i hit the verified button because you know you never know it could be someone yeah. who mm-hmm. paid for twitter blue and it was john morosi i believe was the first one i saw mm-hmm. and i i didn't sob but i had tears in my eyes and i was so re- i was like oh my god thank god this is over <laughs> Yeah. I, I don't mean, care that it's nine years. I don't care that it's 360 million. It's not my money. And I don't even care about the last three years of the deal. I care about the first like five and he'll be fine. It'll be fine. So mm-hmm. yeah. And then I mean, your team's going ham. Yeah. I mean, both of us have had some really great moments this offseason. I, I understand because with the Yankees, it was more of a, oh, well, he's not going to, if I'm a Yankees fan, and as just someone who's been seeing from afar, I, from the very beginning, I didn't know he was going to sign with the Yankees, but it was more of a like, I can't, are they really going to do this yeah. without another plan in place, right? Because they clearly don't seem like they're ready to go all in on shortstop because they love Volpe so much. Mm-hmm. Or, or unless our ESPN friends are right about Tatis, right? Um, that I just couldn't see a world. And after he breaks the Maris record, after he does all of this, after you have been routinely accused under the ownership of Hal Steinbrenner as being, yeah, we'll spend, but we're not going to like really go for it. We're not going to like spend, spend after all of that. If you lost him and you have guys like Donaldson on the team who were not very good last year, not very productive. Mm -hmm. You have all these guys, you have Stanton who just, it would have just been really disastrous. And you look at other teams in your division, the Baltimore Orioles have a great farm system. They refuse to have an anchor. We'll see. Maybe Correa is uh, someone they're going after. But right. for right now, they refuse to just get at least like an anchor. You're spending less than I do for my, my bagel order every morning over in Baltimore. <laughs> then you've got the Red Sox, who, as we're recording this, they desperately needed a catcher. Didn't get Christian Vasquez, who just signed with uh, somebody. I don't know. Who. But, was it um, Toronto? Twins, actually. Oh, Twins. I knew it was a T. The okay. <laughs> and they desperately need a catcher. They didn't do it. And yeah. then they also lost to Alexander Bogarts to yours truly. And that team is just in a whole rut. The Tampa Bay Rays never spend. And the Blue Jays do, I guess. So you have one team. Yeah. Right? But well, they got Bassett, didn't they, today? The Blue Jays, yes. The yeah. The Blue Jays did, yeah. So the, the Blue Jays do spend. But everyone else, it's kind of like whatever. So it would have been very shocking to me if they they really just let that walk. And I know that it might not age well. I know that power hitters like this, people of his size and all that. But... Well, there's I mean, really has baseball. there really hasn't yeah. been someone his size though in baseball. I mean, he's six seven, two eighty two. I mean, that's just. And when you see him move, he doesn't move like someone who's six seven, two eighty two. You know, I mean, fair. he had sixteen stolen bases. He runs around the outfield with no issues. He's diving for balls and mm-hmm. making plays that you think he's not going to get to. And it's not just his height; it's his running too. It's like it's unbelievable watching him every day, and I feel like people don't realize like okay. People do realize how good he is, but they don't realize how good he is at almost everything. <laughs> you know, yeah. they think of no, the hitting, 100%. Mm-hmm. right? That and... he's like a, you know, Adam Dunn or like he's a just a super duper slugger. But I think that I think that actually the last super slugger the Yankees had with, with A-Rod, somewhat similar where I think mm. people forgot how good he was defensively. Yeah, um, at well, times and that he probably should have been playing short. Um, no, no he should have. And I say no it all the time. Jeter. And I know Yankee fans <laughs> hate me for saying it all the time. But the only I mean, reason Derek Jeter started winning gold gloves is when Alex yeah. Rodriguez went to the team. Because yeah, so. A-Rod was a freak. That being mm-hmm. said, really enjoyed the Captain Doc. It some nostalgic stuff. I might watch one of those episodes again. I don't know. There's something about it. Um, 
And then, you know, with the Padres and signing Bogarts, that one was just very like, you know, it's in the middle of the night and I'm sick. I have COVID at the time when this gets announced. And I um, missed it. I, I woke it. up in the morning and found out. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't know it was COVID at the time, but I was like, you know, coughing everywhere. So I, I really had my flu game episode. I couldn't miss it. And it was so thrilling. So I'm really just so happy and proud that both of us are part of teams that are willing to kind of spend. And I know that there's all these these fake little nerdlings wearing their Princeton shirts who are like, yeah, well, this contract might not age well. Yeah, but you guys never keep that same energy with the, all these teams that have never won a World Series, but just have rashes that look really pretty and organized. Right. You know what I mean? Like your Cleveland's, your Milwaukee's. I've said this a hundred times, right? Like I'm not hating on those teams. They're certainly not in the Marlins tier where they don't spend and they're not good at it. Right. <laughs> they're not good at building a team. But, you know, I just find that a lot of people – will rip a Dave Zembrowski, right? Um, who, yes, a lot of money going all over the place. And they rip people like that who spend and try, but they don't rip the people who don't try don't nearly try. as much because right. the team looks clean, right. right? There's something appealing, right? There's something appealing to look at a team and being like, wow, there's no Albatross contract. you got all this young talent. And I'm like, yeah, it is. But you know what would be better? If you if you go out there and give Korea a contract, Baltimore, right. you know what I mean. That's your big piece. I'm not saying you have to spend 300 million, but you just get that nice anchor, and then you get your Gunnar Henderson and Grayson Rodriguez, and then you're beating the Yankees in the ALCS, allegedly, right? So mm -hmm. that's really fun. And the arson judge thing, I agree with you. Said this at the beginning. You probably said it on your show. Very hard what to trust when it comes to reporting, but I think that what, one of the things I've been saying is I, I don't want to like hate on the Heymans of the world. I don't want to hate on the Morosis and some of these guys only because, and for one, I, I personally find Heyman quite funny in his own way. Um, well, yes. <laughs> and I just think that baseball has shown us like, this is a sport that is still reluctant to add certain content creators and give them credentials. Well, the NBA is like, cool. You have two followers. Great. Talk about the NBA all you want. We love it. Yeah. Football, somewhat same thing. As long as you don't criticize a certain, crop of issues mm. baseball still isn't even at that point no. so we shouldn't be surprised that reporting and scoops is also an area that baseball seems to consistently be kind of wrong on right like when you get a report out of free agent signing for football you're like oh yeah it happened like that's mm -hmm. that's a real thing with baseball you have your ken rosenthal's from a few years ago so i don't know if it's their fault as much as the way baseball does its business, maybe it's one of those things that really does change rapidly and it works at a snail's pace. So yeah, it's probably, there's a good chance that the Scherzer thing was at least talked about for the Padres, right? The point when it really looked legit, because I, I like him, Rosenthal. I think he does really great work. I just think that for the sport that has, for the sport that's even figure out to use eight, uh, instant replay until not too long ago, <laughs> it shouldn't be very surprising that it also doesn't know how to be conducive to a, a journalistic standard, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So yeah. that's, that's kind of my feeling on it. Yeah. Um, ugh, yeah. The thing that drives me crazy about baseball is they just, God, they <laughs> basically alienate their younger fans. Like they're trying to yeah. like, they, they talk about how old baseball fans are, but they don't do anything to bring in the younger fans. <laughs> It's like, hello? Like, I don't understand. Also, my ha-ha laugh sounded like Nelson from The Sim Simpsons. I'm so sorry. I don't know where the hell that <laughs> you came did, from. You did for a second there. I will <laughs> say, Feel the Dream Games, Feel the Dream Games. The Feel the Dreams game was very cool. My only beef is, why did you follow up one of your best ideas you've had with the Reds and the Cubs the next year? What are you doing, baseball? <laughs> like, I just, well, all right, I, okay, well, the Cubs are a big market. What are you doing with the Reds? Throw up. But wasn't the Field up. of Dreams game supposed to be 2020 and everything got pushed back? So maybe they were assuming the teams would be a little, you know what I mean? Right? Because wasn't it supposed to be yeah, 2020 and it was pushed back? And Like, anyone with two eyeballs knew that the Reds weren't going to be any good. No. But maybe you're right. Maybe they planned too far ahead. Yeah, and they thought, oh, well, the Reds have Castellanos and whatnot. OK, that's, that's a fair retort. That's a fair retort. I'll give you that. Yeah, but that still. was on, that baseball. was a cool. <laughs> that is a very cool thing. I mean, I I can take or leave Field of Dreams. It's not one of my favorite baseball movies, but just the the field itself, 
and playing with the corn there and just, you know, I found that cool. And the old time uniforms and the hats and everything. And I think mm -hmm. it could be really fun for the teams, especially that have a really long history and can do that with their uniforms. Not like, mm -hmm. you know, the Rays going back 25 years, but, you know, someone like <laughs> yeah. the Yankees, the Red Sox, like those types of teams um, could be really cool. Yeah. But we have to come up with more ideas. Abby and I were trying to come up with more ideas for different games that they could do, like a League of Their Own game or like something like that. But obviously yeah. the guys would not be wearing skirts, so don't worry about that. But mm -hmm. some sort of, you know... A Sandlot uh, thing where you just have this random dog that's in the outfield, or whatever, right? <laughs> like, just stuff like that. Or what to, I mean, it's just... I, I appreciate that they tried. You know what I mean? Yes. And, I, and by the way, that game itself, the, the White Sox Yankees incredible like yeah. for, it was like the best game in the world and you know yeah. what i for one don't care if allegedly they use some different baseballs for that game don't care right. Right. great awesome make the one game super exciting and fun i don't care yeah um <laughs> but yeah i mean uh just to to bring it back i guess on the off season um it has been super fun i think both of our teams have done very very well uh all things considered and it's still not done yet nope. i know rodan is someone that the Yankees have reportedly be interested in, which tracks because they reportedly were after him at the deadline. Mm -hmm. I think that would be an, an incredible uh, addition. I mean, he's probably the best pitcher overall based on his age and whatnot. That was, you know, heading into free agency yeah. because the Grom's a little bit older, Verlander older. That's what I mean. Right. Um, right. And with the Padres, I mean, for me, I have been banging that Michael Conforto drum for a year and a half now. I am so all in on that guy. I think that he is Marcus Simeon. I think he's a one-year deal guy who is going to be absolutely phenomenal and then boost his market. And then if they lose him after that, it's whatever. But right. I'm just all in on him. I'm all in on bringing Corey Kluber back to the Padres, man. They, they made a mistake trading him back in the day. So all this is to say is there's still a lot of fun free agents left, and I'm really happy hasn't gone because i think it's done that in the yeah. past i mean lord knows i remember when the lockout ended and they kept telling us again back to the whole reporting thing right uh that it was just going to be bam and it wasn't it, it no. took a while and it was really frustrating at times um and as you attested to with the machado and harper thing so i'm just really grateful that we've gotten a lot of signings and it doesn't look like they're going to stop um anytime soon so very happy about that so in a moment, we're going to discuss what other teams have done because the uh, Mets are going ham. So we'll talk about that. But yeah. first, at Locked On Yankees and Locked On Padres, we believe home should be where you and your family feel the safest, especially over the holidays. So this season, give yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system, Simply Safe. Right now, Simply Safe is offering Locked On Yankees and Locked On Padres listeners 40% off a new security system. But don't put this off. Simply Safe was named the best home security system of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report for the third year in a row. In an emergency, 24 7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Tech technology. So let's say that again, sorry. Fast Protect Technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify that a threat is real so you can get higher priority police response. So if a raccoon walks by your window, they won't call the police. Simply Safe is a whole home security system with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door. And it has HD security cameras for inside and out, motion detectors that only alert you when a threat is real, and it even has hazard sensors that detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. With the top rated Simply Safe app, which you can use on your phone, stay in complete control of your system, arm or disarm, unlock for a guest, access your cameras, or adjust the system anytime, anywhere. So if you're at a Padres game or a Yankees game, you can check your phone and make sure that your house is safe. Don't miss your chance to save big on our favorite security system. Get 40% off any new system at simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Well done. No one's safe from the Mets. <laughs> <laughs> the Mets wrath. The Mets, the... <laughs> Big Daddy Steve Cohen, am I right? I mean, he's you want the every way owner to be like to. this, though. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think that there's some case to be made that making other owners look a little bit bad, and that it increases the 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 the, the parity, or it decreases the parity, maybe in baseball, where it's just kind of like 
you're going to have this $400 million team and whatnot. My counter to that is it's not like we were seeing signs that those smaller market teams were about to be like, all right, you know what? Yeah, let's spend a little bit. And right. then they got shut down when they saw what Cohen was doing. No, right. they never showed even the slightest inkling. The Tampa Bay Rays don't give a flying F about that. Nope. I promise you. The Cleveland Guardians do not care. The Oakland, the Oakland A's don't even know how to trade their best players properly, right? They don't even know how to get a good return for them. So <laughs> I think that there is a universe in which I could see, yeah, maybe going that much investing might not be great overall for the league my response to that is well overall we haven't seen an inclination that any owner was going to anyway so right. steve cohen coming in and doing it anyway i think is good I, I really do i think that it's putting the mets more on the map it creates i think a very interesting rivalry between the yankees and mets um which hopefully uh i mean, I mean at this rate it might just be become the new you know the yankees red sox in a lot of ways except not as often because you know, I don't even know what's going on in Boston. Nobody does. Did you read by any chance that Boston Globe story on Heim Bloom, like sitting on the airplane and like staring at his phone? And like, it looked like a scene out of like a Paul Thomas Anderson movie, like the ending. Like, it was really weird. Like, the end of like Moneyball type of thing, like just staring out into the distance. I was like, what is going on with this guy? Like, is he okay? <laughs> uh, so that was, that was the whole thing. But yeah, I mean, the Mets, Kode Senga, Justin Verlander. They re-signed Brandon Nimmo, uh, and they've probably done something else by the time I finish speaking. So it's, right, they might have signed two really players cool while we were recording this. <laughs> it's it's the percentage of that happening is greater than zero. Yeah, and that says a lot. Like that, it could literally happen as we're recording this. The Padres are kind of in that situation. It's very very funny. It's like you know that the three dragon meme where it's like the two dragons that are normal and then the other one's weird or whatever. Like kind of like the hyenas from Lion King. Mm. the fact that we're living in an age where everyone's like the big market Mets it's like okay all right I, I see that the big market Dodgers the reluctantly big market Yankees and then the San Diego Padres yeah <laughs> just coming in like the weird black sheep of that group yeah. and they don't care I wish that they might spend a little bit more smartly but bottom line is I, I just the fans and everybody absolutely love it and yeah. with the Mets I think it's pretty – I mean, we already said it, but I think it's really good for the sport, and it's it's kind of fun. What is it like for you as a Yankees fan, though, seeing the Mets kind of do what you're used to have seen for the past millennia uh, that the Yankees used to do? <laughs> um, good for them, but, you know, money doesn't always buy championships because if it did, the Yankees would have won a lot more than they did. Yeah. Um, you know, and a lot of things have to go right in order for you to win a championship, you know. Yes, the Verlander thing is great, but let's not forget, he's 40 now, and he's coming off the Tommy John surgery. And yes, last season was unbelievable for him, but there is a risk that something bad can happen to him because he's really, that's old, and he has a lot of innings on that arm, like over 3,000 mm -hmm. innings on that arm. Um, you know, Scherzer had some issues last season, too, and, you know, it's not a guarantee you know, just like it's not a guarantee for the Yankees that Aaron Judge doesn't break down. But I like what the Mets are doing. You know, like, good for them. Um, good for their fans. They have something to actually gloat about now instead of gloating about nothing, which is what they normally do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> I'm not wrong. <laughs> no, you're not wrong. I, I'm not wrong. And I know there are people in my fan base who do the same thing, so I'll call them out, too. Um but no, good for them. Seriously. Like, this is actually fun because if Steve Cohen keeps doing this sort of thing, it's going to wake Hal's ass up. And, you know, I just love the fact that the Yankees were so freaked out by the arson judge tweet that Hal called judge from Italy and was like, OK, what do you want from us? <laughs> yeah, right. I want a ninth year. You got it. Done. <laughs> That's all sure they needed to happened? do. Are we yeah. sure that happened? Yeah, there sure? was a story about it by Brian. No, I know. I know. But I'm like, are we sure? I think Guy, so because owner, you know owner who's been no no could, or hold on <clears throat> the conspiracy hobby is making an appearance. <laughs> All right, <laughs> here we go. Owner who's been getting ridiculed in the media a lot. Has not even that he was getting booed player. by the fans. And then right after the contract thing comes out, they're sure to have all these reports that are like, "Hey, Hal made the call." Yeah. Well, saying, no, Hal said on the, the truth. What is no, the real truth? <laughs> Hal said on the uh, hot stove show a um, couple weeks before the signing that he had a one on one conversation with Judge and he basically asked him, do you want to be a Yankee? And I said this on my show 
I think I said it the day after the signing. So not during the live show. I think during the next show. Why on earth? I know it's his hometown, but why on earth? And you said it earlier. Would you leave the Yankees? Like, mm. you had the taste of being on the Yankees. You break Maris's record. You see all the pomp and cir circumstance when you're at Yankee Stadium and the reception that you get from those people. And sure, it would be nice to be a Sa San Francisco Giant, but it's not the same as being a New York Yankee. No. So I really don't think the judge was going to the Giants at all. And I feel like... You know, maybe the Yankees were like a little too like jumping the gun and being like, yeah, yeah, we'll give you whatever you want. But again, not my money, not my time. So <laughs> I can't really be upset about it. Um, but yeah, no, Hal didn't want to be booed again. He would have been mm. booed vociferously for like five years straight every time he set foot on that freaking field for any kind of you know the 25th anniversary of the 1998 world series is coming up in 2023 you don't think the yankees are going to have some sort of ceremony there and that hal's not going to be there please so he would have been booed off that field like he was during the Jeter Hall of Fame ceremony and nothing had happened up at that point just the you know the Yankees were doing horribly in August and people were booing him like he had committed murder and mm. Hal's the type of guy that that actually affected him it really did yeah. you could tell it affected mm -hmm. him does, this, he, does it feel like a now John Henry of the Red Sox is just nowhere to be seen so maybe that's part of it mm. but yeah, how does it strike? I think he wants to be like the bit. He knows that it's the Yankee town. Yeah. But I will say with the, with the judge thing, it's not impossible that maybe he saw what happened with Gallo and he was like, ah, yeah, but this place, if you if you blow it, man, this 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 is tough out here. So may, maybe that played a little bit, but you're right. I mean, it's just – and the, the big part of this is that he was homegrown. Um, yeah. And the name is sick and the record. I think that that plays into it too. Like he's he's always been a Yankee, and I think that that. And means what would a they lot. have done with the judges' chamber? You can't get rid of that. Come on. Yeah, I mean that's that's <laughs> next level, man. Are you kidding me? That's that, 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 that you're in business, you know. Yeah. So yeah, the Mets are going ham. Um, the A's was it the A's Milwaukee and who was the third team involved in that trade for Sean Murphy? Yeah. Braves for the Braves. Yeah, the Braves get Murphy. Um, again, I mean crazy how much the braves have been able to do all these moves yeah um they are another team that what i like about them is yes their payroll isn't as high as some other teams but it's not because for lack of trying it is right. because they i think the braves are an interesting team to follow where they're kind of showing here's what we'll do for you when we think you're really good we will accept that it's a small sample size we'll be like we don't we don't care we will pay you less than what you might make if you keep this up for a lot more years now don't get me wrong the Acuna contract is borderline robbery it's wild the <laughs> yeah. Ozzie Albies but some other ones the Michael Harris contract Spencer like I, I think that their pitch has been when we really trust our players we're going to pay them immediately even if it's not you know the top market value in a sport where things can change pretty drastically I mean Michael Conforto was probably going to be a decently priced free agent and then he messes up his wrist he didn't accept the qualifying offer from the Mets and now he's got this, you know, idiot Puerto Rican kid on his podcast begging for him to come over on a one-year deal, right? So maybe that's what's happening with the Braves is they're <laughs> being one of those teams that's like, we will build through our farm and all that, and we will pay our guys immediately. Uh, maybe that's their strategy, right? Instead of waiting it out and taking advantage of all those arbitration years, maybe right. that's what the Braves are showing is that players hate arbitration. That right. might well, be what yeah. the, the Atlanta Braves are showing right now even more so. So I'm curious to see how that plays out. I thought a person opened my door, but a cat just walked into my room. <laughs> mm, oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is what happens when you live with a bunch of cats. So, um, Javi, thank you for doing this with me. Because, of course. you know, the off season is, yes, things have been happening, but it's also kind of slow because, you know, once they signed Judge, there wasn't really <laughs> <laughs> happening. And I keep putting off my, let's talk about Isaiah Kiner Falefa and Josh Donaldson show. Oh, so, oh god yeah oh, oh god i'm gonna throw up just hearing that yeah, oh you, you, god yeah you don't blame oh. me for doing that do you <laughs> oh no that is gross that is <laughs> gross that's like yeah. what the that's a little bit like what the padres felt like at the media last year uh where it was just like oh man yeah you got manny you got jake and oh my god <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean that's what it, it looked at one point but with you guys i mean oh god i 
thankfully i don't think icaf will be there for long but yeah, yeah i mean it's it's always a blast and looking forward to what we have to talk again when you know the yankees are rumored to acquire you darvish or or xander <laughs> bogarts or manny machado which in fairness that one might actually have legs to it in fairness because he does have an opt-out after this year so i'm looking forward to when we have to talk about that and it's the Yankees MO to get a player, you know, five years after they should have gotten him, which would be <laughs> yeah. perfect. So, Thankful yeah. They didn't. Yeah. So that is it for this crossover edition of Locked On Yankees and Locked On Padres, both of which are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Remember, you can listen to both shows on every podcasting platform available. New ones pop up every day. You can watch and subscribe to both shows on YouTube. Again, hit the thumbs up button and comment on YouTube as well. Click the bell so you know when the videos go live. Once again, thank you for making Locked On Padres and Locked On Yankees your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only locked on can provide locked on sports today available on this app youtube or wherever you get your podcasts have a lovely evening if you're a yankee fan and have a lovely day if you're a padres fan Thank you.